Optimal News presents Air Pollution in China. Canadian company sells cans of fresh air to smog choking China. It looks like a stylish product for hair, but it's not. It's Vitality Air, fresh air for stuffy noses living in polluted environments. This is how low humanity has sunk. Even air has become a commodity. A commodity that can be sold at a high price, especially to nations like China, where residents are choking in smog and air pollution. One can of clean air and oxygen from the beautiful Rocky Mountains in Canada can cost from about $14 to $20 only. With prices like that, who will be able to afford to breathe? The first batch of 500 canisters sold out within two weeks, mainly bought by affluent Chinese women who buy them for their families or as a Christmas present. The Canadian company is not even the first to have this idea. The Chinese themselves were the first ones to link clean air with sky-high profits. Beijing artist Liang Qigong sold clean air from southern France to his desperate countrymen after a trip there last year. In 2013, multimillionaire Chen Guangbiao sold air from less industrialized and polluted regions in China to more polluted places for five yuan. That's less than 80 cents. At least that was cheaper. The craziest air pollution protection masks people wear in China. Air quality and pollution levels have gotten so bad in Beijing that the government has issued a red alert for the first time, warning people to stay inside with their air purifiers or face one of the smoggiest polluted atmospheric conditions on Earth. Those that choose to brave the choking toxic smog should probably heed our list of the most fashion-forward and craziest air pollution masks. First up is the Airwaves mask created by Frog Shanghai. It connects to a smartphone app to measure pollution levels and keep wearers in the know about air quality in different neighborhoods. If you want other people to see your smile but still breathe cleaner air, there's also the nasal air purifier made by Mai Xingren. But only nose breathing is covered, and any mouth breaths are still going to be pretty polluted. Another nasal option is the Infapure Invisible Air Filtration Mask. But if you don't like sticking stuff up your nose and you still want your face to be visible, there's the Sunny Smile Transparent Mask. This Toto Bobo mask is somewhere between the transparent masks and the full face coverage filters. If you like the vintage look, you can always go to the Army Surplus Store and snag one of these retro World War II style masks. For a more modern style, there are all kinds of apocalypse chic choices, as showcased at the 2014 China Fashion Week by designer Yin Peng. Joggers and runners need to be especially careful when taking deep breaths of pollution while getting some exercise. Cyclists are also vulnerable to the air quality problems in China, so British artist Matt Hope designed this breathing bicycle that uses the power generated by pedaling to filter the air for the person riding it to breathe. Another innovation in air purification by artist Chu Chi uses a natural solution by attaching a breathing apparatus to a box with a plant inside that produces pure oxygen. These artist mock-ups show clothing that has the face mask built in. Are these the future of breathing? Imagine what these kids will be wearing on their faces by the time they're old enough to choose for themselves. These people certainly have some interesting tastes, and it looks like there's a lot more where that came from. China adopts extreme measures to ensure safe and smog-free APEC. As world leaders descend upon Beijing to attend the annual APEC meeting, the Chinese government is determined to show the best side of its capital and has resorted to extreme measures to ensure security and clean the air. The APEC meeting takes place in Beijing's Huairo district from November 5th to November 11th. About 1,000 face recognition cameras have been installed across the district. Hotel staff are requested to report any guests from Tibet, Xinjiang, and Qinghai province. Residents flying kites or pet pigeons near Beijing's Capital International Airport risk detention. To prevent smog from enveloping the capital, Chinese authorities will only allow private cars on the roads on alternate days based on their license numbers. Some 800 factories in the vicinity of the APEC venue are not allowed to operate during the summit. Volunteers at the APEC summit also went through a vigorous selection process and etiquette training. Ventilation corridors may be China's solution to heavy smog. China's capital city is planning to construct ventilation corridors in a bid to tackle the country's air pollution. Densely populated cities tend to generate more energy and waste heat, resulting in a warmer environment than surrounding rural areas. Measures to curb pollution in Beijing have led to air quality improving only marginally. In 2015, the city had 186 days of up-to-par air quality, 
up 14 from 2014. To reduce smog, the capital is planning to build ventilation corridors. These are designed to relieve a city's heat and pollution by improving urban wind flow. The corridors will be created by connecting parks, rivers, lakes, highways, and small building blocks. Five primary corridors, over 500 meters wide, will run from the northern suburbs to the south. Secondary corridors measuring more than 80 meters are also planned. The corridors will reportedly allow northern winds to blow through Beijing during severe winter smog spells. Experts also suggest curbing the amount and height of city center buildings, as well as adding more green spaces. Beijing saw its worst smog spell from November to December of 2015. The air pollution was so thick it blocked views and prompted authorities to issue a red alert warning. Beijing orders red alert for severe smog. For the first time ever, China, the world's largest carbon emitter, has issued an air quality red alert in their capital. A red alert, the highest on China's four-tier smog warning, is issued when authorities forecast three consecutive days of severe smog. That means schools will close down, traffic will be reduced by half, and factories will cut back on production. The World Health Organization lists 25 micrograms of particulate matter up to 2.5 micrometers per cubic meter to be a healthy level. Readings in Beijing were above 300 micrograms on Monday and are expected to rise until a cold front moves in on Thursday. Last week, certain parts of the city hit 1,000 micrograms per cubic meter, according to the official Beijing government website. This is the first time Beijing has issued a red alert. A recent study has shown that China's own poor air quality and the smog blowing across the Pacific Ocean towards the United States from China is caused by the manufacture of goods for export to America. Powerful westerly winds can carry pollutants from China across the Pacific Ocean within days. The study shows that in 2006, sulfate concentrations in the western United States increased 2%, and ozone and carbon monoxide levels also increased slightly because of the transportation of pollutants from emissions that resulted from the manufacture of goods for export to the U.S. In 2006, China's exporting of goods to the U.S. was responsible for an estimated 7.4% of sulfur dioxide emissions, 5.7% of nitrogen oxides, 4.6% of carbon monoxide, and 3.6% of black carbon. Black carbon is a climate-forcing agent formed through the incomplete combustion of fossil fuels, biofuel, and biomass. It is a particular problem because rain does not easily wash it out of the atmosphere, which allows it to travel long distances. Black carbon is linked to asthma, lung, and heart disease. However, the amount of air pollution in the western United States resulting from emissions from China is still very small compared with the amount produced by sources within the country. Smog-eating buildings, the solution to Beijing smog. Heavy smog is a growing problem in Beijing and 25 provinces in China. When even adding more trees and plants can't help China clean up its air, what sort of solutions is out there? A smog-eating building. Designed by Berlin's elegant embellishments, this innovative tile material on the Dodre de Especialidades tower outside the hospital in Mexico City mitigates smog by neutralizing exhaust emitted by hundreds of passing cars each day. A layer of titanium dioxide, which is also found in sunblock and paint, is applied to the tiles on the building's beehive-shaped facade. When exposed to ultraviolet rays from the sun, titanium dioxide breaks down smog into safer chemicals, such as water and carbon dioxide. The unique beehive shape also increases the surface area that can react with sunlight. According to designers, the smog-eating tiles function best at parking lots, sky bridges, and bus stations. Pollution from China ruins U.S. effort to cut ozone levels on West Coast. A study published in Nature Geoscience claims the U.S.'s effort to cut ozone levels have gone to waste due to pollution arriving on the West Coast from China. From 2005 to 2010, the U.S. managed to cut ozone-producing nitrous oxide emissions by 20 percent by imposing strict standards for motor vehicles and industry. During the same period of time, however, China's growth pushed its own ozone levels up by about 7 percent. 
Half of the increase in China came from the ground up, while the other half descended from the stratosphere. Although some of that pollution may have been blown to China from India and other parts of Asia. In the same way that the dominant westerly winds blow China's air pollution into the troposphere straight across the Pacific Ocean and into the United States, causing ozone levels to rise again. High levels of pollution can cause respiratory problems, damage to crops and of course global warming. According to researcher Willem Verstraten, local and national efforts to fight pollution could have a limited impact if the problem is not also dealt with at an international level. Chinese authorities hope a newly developed drone can help clear up China's heavily polluted skies. China has previously used fixed wing drones to disperse chemicals for pollution control efforts, as well as to seed rain clouds over drought stricken regions. The state owned Aviation Industry Corporation of China, however, has developed a new parafoil drone that uses a type of parachute. The new drone is said to be 90% cheaper to operate and is capable of carrying 700 kilos of chemicals. The new drones will first be tested around major Chinese airports as smog levels in many parts of China have become so bad that pilots have been forced to conduct blind landings. The exact composition of the chemicals China plans to use for smog clearing is unknown, but reports say the chemicals will freeze pollution particles, causing them to fall to the earth. The new parafoil drones have a five kilometer flight radius and Chinese media reports tests around Chinese airports will begin in late March 2014. Chinese Premier Li Keqiang recently announced a war on pollution, and state media says the government hopes the new drones can help in that fight. After running computer simulations to study how chemicals could be used to help ameliorate smog in Beijing, scientists at the government's Beijing Weather Modification Office may have found a solution. Chinese scientists say liquid nitrogen, an industrial coolant nearly three times as cold as dry ice, could be used to fight smog in Beijing. Government researchers have proposed dumping liquid nitrogen into the air as a fine mist, at least 10 metres above ground. The nitrogen would form a belt of cooler air roughly 20 metres thick that would act as a shield against air pollutants above. Dust and other pollutants in smog would be frozen, crystallised and fall to the ground. A smog-free zone would be created that would last for several hours. Potential problems include the fact that liquid nitrogen can cause burns if exposed to skin and the fact that small shifts in wind patterns could have unknown effects on the results.